Founding Brothers, The Revolutionary Generation by Joseph J. Ellis In this book, Ellis narrates and analyzes the stories of seven prominent politicians of the time after the American Revolution, while relating their stories and actions to the solidification of America as not only an independent nation, but a prosperous one. Through the cumulative analysis of the long-term and short-term effects of the legendary duel between Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr, Thomas Jefferson's infamous dinner party, Benjamin Franklin's attempt to compel Congress to address the issue of slavery, James Madison's quest to end Franklin's efforts, George Washington's precedent-setting farewell address, and John Adams' famous friendship with Thomas Jefferson, Ellis conveys the improbability of the successful creation of America as an independent nation. This analysis leads to Ellis's thesis, where he emphasizes the conflicts between the rights of states and the power of a strong centralized federal government created by the Constitution, how leading politicians at the time displayed those conflicts, and how those conflicts not only contributed to America's current prosperity, but also detriment. The fact that Ellis refers to Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Franklin, Madison, Burr, and Hamilton as founding brothers instead of founding fathers as they are normally referred to demonstrates how Ellis sees this group of men as a family that shared beliefs of freedom and independence. As the newborn nation of America moved beyond the American Revolution, which marked the beginning of American independence, America's true beginning as a nation began with the formation of the Constitution. The Constitution, while providing the framework of our nation by combining the many different groups of people into one cohesive population bound together under one code of law and government, generated much of the controversy and debate during the first stages of American nationhood up to the present. First, Ellis narrates the story of the famous duel between Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. However, Ellis goes beyond just telling the exciting story of this duel and emphasizes the events before and after the duel to highlight the closeness of these politicians. Hamilton and Burr's continual insults toward one another ever since the conflicts between Federalists and Anti-Federalists erupted were strictly political, not personal. Since Burr and Hamilton both knew each other very well, they both understood the importance of their political reputation and honor. So once the exchange of insults, which Hamilton considered political while Burr found it personally offensive, reached a limit, Burr challenged Hamilton to a duel. Where Ellis does narrate the actual duel, he accentuates his desire to discover the historical truth behind the controversial, highly questioned, missing seconds of the duel, where Burr and Hamilton fired their weapons. Of the accounts of these missing seconds by Burr and Hamilton's loyal associate Nathaniel Pendleton, Ellis believes Burr's account to be the most believable, as depicted in the following clip from the PBS series American Experience. He had made up his mind not to fire at Burr, but to fire in the air. Another one of Hamilton's political enemies, Thomas Jefferson, held a friendly dinner on June 20th, 1790, in order to resolve disputes between Hamilton and James Madison, which were deeply rooted in their differing economic and political plans for the future of the United States. To analyze Hamilton's and Madison's disputes, Ellis again uses hindsight to elaborate on each of their unique personalities, which heavily contribute to their points of view. Madison, a strong supporter for states' rights, believed that the economy should also benefit the states more than the federal government. Hamilton, on the other hand, greatly supported a strong centralized federal government and believed that the federal government should control most economic power. 
Despite the fact that political parties had not been formed yet, since this dinner was held during the Washington administration, the polarization of the American political scene had already begun. To transition into the next chapter, Ellis emphasizes the political divergence, specifically over the issue of slavery. Tracing back to the creation of the Constitution, the delicate issue of slavery single-handedly determined whether or not the Constitution would be ratified. The South threatened to not join the Union had it restricted slavery or the slave trade. Therefore, the North placed a clause in the Constitution that prohibited Congress from passing laws that abolished or restricted the slave trade until 1808. Benjamin Franklin took action against this clause through his support for abolition and presented it to Congress using the necessary and proper clause as justification. However, James Madison made certain that amendments regarding slavery were not made. Ellis concluded that Madison's actions against abolition did not signify his support for the South. Rather, being a supporter of strong state governments, he tried to stop the talks of abolition in the House of Representatives to set an example of a weaker federal government. This ties back to Ellis's thesis of state versus federal powers. Madison's precedent of silence, the name of the chapter, on slavery lasted for many years after 1808 because of Congress's inability to decide on a compromise between slavery and abolition. Congress's inability to compromise exposed growing rifts between politicians who distinguished themselves not only by party but by regions which eventually evolved into the Civil War. Washington's Farewell Address While it established several political precedents, it mainly concerned the necessity of national unity in order to survive the early stages of nation. His first aim was to make the growing political rifts more narrow due to his firm belief that a divided government could not operate effectively, especially due to America's fragile new status as an independent nation. Next, Washington aimed to remind all citizens of the importance of national unity if America were to survive as an independent nation. Ellis constructs a theory, which provides an alternate explanation to Washington's voluntary departure from the presidential seat after only eight years. Due to the high priority of honor and reputation during Washington's time, as displayed by the duel between Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton, Washington decided to step down from power to leave behind his great legacy as the leader of the American Revolution and the first president of the United States. Instead of continuing his position as president and leaving behind a negative legacy, Washington understood his physical and mental limits and believed that continuing to lead this country would cause its detriment, which further supports Ellis's theory. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, although supporting each other in the American Revolution, spent much of the late 18th and early 19th century locked in a political battle. The time Ellis spends discussing the fluctuating relationship between Thomas Jefferson and John Adams significantly demonstrates the importance of their relationship as a representation of most other relationships among the founding brothers. Ellis points out how, despite the adverse political scene, which split the founding brothers into separate political parties, the so-called Spirit of 76, referring to 1776, the signing of the Declaration of the Independence, generally prevailed over the political strife. This demonstrated the true strength of brotherhood over the political differences, which stemmed from the anxiety over the possible failure of the nation they risked their lives to create. Given enough time, all of these founding brothers, along with others, realized that they shared a historical experience together that could not be ruined by their deep political differences. Throughout this book, friendship and brotherhood demonstrated the closeness between these politicians, and even though the turbulent political times after the revolution tested their resolve, the true spirit of American conception 
overcame those political differences. Mm -hmm.